In our video, Alarming Oils to Avoid for Cardiovascular Disease, we discussed how many oils that may appear healthy can be disastrous for our health, and specifically our heart health. We explained how vegetable oils often contain omegas that are extremely sensitive to light and heat, unfortunately, both of which are used to manufacture these oils. This then turns these omegas rancid, so when they enter the body, they cannot function properly. This has a disastrous impact on the health of our cells. This is because our cell membranes are made up of omega-3 and 6 fats, but if they are rancid, the cell will then become dysfunctional. When this occurs, we have chronic inflammation and chronic disease, such as heart disease. So let's look at our number 5 worst oils, plus discover how one type of fat found in some of these oils can dramatically increase risk of heart disease. Number 5. Corn oil is one of the most popular vegetable oils and is used in a wide range of products, from salad dressings to margarine. Corn oil contains high levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAS, which lower cholesterol. But don't be mistaken in thinking this will necessarily lower your risk of heart disease. In fact, a 1965 study found that participants who were given corn oil successfully lowered their cholesterol but had an increased risk of death from heart disease. It's believed this is because it is easily oxidised. This breaks the integrity of the oil, making it inflammatory. When polyunsaturated fats are oxidised and enter the bloodstream, it can increase oxidative stress, inflammation in the arteries, the creation of arterial plaques, thus promoting heart disease. Corn oil is high in linoleic acid, which has been found to drive weight gain, obesity, and of course increases the risk of type 2 diabetes, a condition which greatly increases your risk of heart disease. Next up, number four, cottonseed oil. The seeds from cotton began to be used in the early 20th century. Large corporations spotted a business opportunity to incorporate cheap cottonseed oil into their products. This effort culminated with the 1911 launch of a vegetable shortening. This soon became the chief of the vegetable oils and replaced lard in many kitchens across America. But unfortunately, oil from the seeds of cotton is mostly polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAS. As we've already discussed, these are very unstable. That means the fat oxidizes when exposed to light and heat. Thus, the majority of the oil goes rancid before you even buy it. The manufacturers knew this, so to make it more heat stable, they hydrogenated the polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAS, in cottonseed oil. This is a process where hydrogen is added to the oil to make it more solid at room temperature. But this is problematic, as hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils contain trans fatty acids. Trans fats have been found to be highly hazardous for health. The extent of this is that the World Health Organization asked governments to remove them from the international food supply. Eating this type of fat has been associated with a much higher risk of heart disease. Therefore, this type of oil is best avoided if you want to maintain a healthy heart. Next up, an oil which became one of the main sources of vegetable oil in the 1960s. It's a plant that was first recorded in ancient Egypt. Number three, safflower oil. This is often touted as a healthy oil, but it has more linoleic acid, an inflammatory and easily spoiled polyunsaturated fatty acids than any other oil on the market. The refining of this oil is much like the other oils in as much as it is exposed to light and heat, which turns the omega fatty acids found in it rancid. A 2012 review of randomised controlled trials found that linoleic acid, the main component of safflower oil, increased inflammation. Plus a 2013 study on safflower oil found that when it replaced animal fat, the following increased weight, risk of cardiovascular disease and risk of death from all causes. Now for our number two, an oil which the US alone uses 18 billion pounds of annually. But first, would you like this video and subscribe to my channel? It helps spread the truth about heart disease to people that need it, and I'd really appreciate it. Plus, we're giving away an exciting ebook, The Surprising Truth About Fat and Cholesterol. 
It's a real eye-opener written in an easy-to-grasp format that can change your life. And you get the first episode of a unique documentary series, The Untold Story of Heart Disease. All you do is click on the link below and both gifts are yours within seconds. Number two, soybean oil. It's estimated that about 10% of all calories come from soybean oil in America. It's in salad dressings, soybean meal, snacks and margarine. And most of these products contain GMO soy. It's also made up of 50% linoleic acid, which we now know is highly inflammatory when exposed to heat and light. Furthermore, soy is high in phytic acid and trypsin inhibitors. This means that it prevents the absorption of vitamins, minerals and proteins. A research paper published in January 2020 concluded soybean oil not only leads to obesity and diabetes, but could also affect neurological conditions like autism, Alzheimer's disease, anxiety and depression. Both obesity and diabetes significantly increase the risk of heart disease. Thus, not consuming soybean oil could help reduce risk of heart disease. Now let's unveil the number one worst oil for cardiovascular disease. Number one, canola oil. This type of oil has been touted as healthy and is a firm favourite for many health-loving individuals. But is this oil supporting our well-being as many believe? The sad news is that this oil is made from a genetically modified plant. It was developed in the 1960s in order to make rapeseed a safe crop to consume. 80% of canola plants grown in Canada, the number one producer of canola, are genetically modified to withstand the treatment of herbicides. Currently it's the third most produced oil in the world, after palm and soybean oil. In order to extract the oils, solvents such as hexane are used as the seeds are boiled. The oil is then degummed, removing lipids, neutralised, bleached and the waxes are removed. After these steps it's deodorised, a process which creates trans fats. As we already mentioned, trans fats are highly dangerous. Finally, synthetic antioxidants are added to the oil. Antioxidants are normally a healthy thing to consume. However, the synthetic version of them can potentially be hazardous. They're added because the oil naturally goes rancid very quickly. Adding antioxidants increases the shelf life and enables it to have a high smoking point of 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So how is this oil dangerous to consume? As I already mentioned, the deodorizing process creates trans fats in this oil. Although bottles of canola oil will often state they are trans fat free, this isn't exactly true. The FDA rules state that companies can claim there are no trans fats in their oil as long as the trans fat content stays below 0.5 gram per serving. One study published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry found that refined canola oil contains around 0.6% of trans fatty acids. This is concerning when we consider that the recommended daily intake of trans fats is zero. Let's look at the side effects of trans fats. Firstly, it lowers HDL cholesterol, which increases risk of cardiovascular disease, increases inflammation, causes endothelial dysfunction, which basically means the blood vessel walls are damaged, induces body fat accumulation, decreases insulin sensitivity, thus increasing risk of diabetes and increasing risk of cardiovascular disease and strokes. Interestingly, for every 2% of calories from trans fat consumed daily, the risk of heart disease rises by 23%. Aside from the trans fats issue, the synthetic antioxidants added to canola oil can be problematic. These preservatives can have carcinogenic and toxic effects when consumed regularly in large doses. According to the FDA, these antioxidants are not toxic in small doses, but the issue is that people often eat more than the acceptable limit of these preservatives, especially considering the amounts of foods they sneak into, such as crackers, chips, biscuits, packaged cereal and muesli bars. So be sure to pay attention to how much of it you're consuming, as the health ramifications can be huge. That sums up our five worst oils for cardiovascular disease. 
Let our community know in the comments below which one surprised you the most. And before you leave, make sure to claim your free gifts by clicking the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to our Heart Disease Code channel and hit that bell button for more help managing your blood health. Thanks for watching. Have a heart healthy day.